Cloudflare now lets you turn an R2 bucket into a data lake house with zero egress fees via this service called R2 Data Catalog. Note, it is still in beta, but it's a compelling feature to give a spin because it's basically a managed Apache Iceberg catalog on top of R2. And if you weren't aware, R2 could be seen as the S3 from Amazon, but on Cloudflare. And one of the big features that R2 offers here is that they have zero egress fees. It's a different pricing model than what S3 offers. I want to dive into the service by also running a bit of a demo, but before doing that, I do think it might help to just add a little bit of context and explain why having the service with Apache Iceberg on top of R2 is just interesting to start with. Because the service really does seem to be set up in such a way that you benefit most from R2 without having to do any management yourself. Now, maybe the best way to explain Apache Iceberg is to contrast it with, let's say, a normal database. So let's say that this is a normal database. Inside of a database, we have tables. So let's say table one and table two, etc. And these tables, they might have some features. So, you know, a column could have an index, let's say, and different tables could have different indices. Columns would also have all sorts of types. But one thing that is the case with a database is that the way you would store this table is typically the same as you would store this other table. I'll be a little bit hand wavy here because a lot of this depends exactly what kind of database you are using. But one thing you could safely say is that a database does offer a single way to store data with a little bit of wiggle room for schemas maybe and some form of configuration. But another way to think about data is to maybe think of it more as a catalog. And one way to think about that is that if we want to maybe fetch some data, that there is literally a catalog that tells us where it is. Maybe some of the data lives on some S3 bucket, or maybe some of the data lives in an R2 bucket. You could even theoretically have something inside of a file system or perhaps maybe even a database. But the point here is that when you're dealing with a catalog, data could actually live in different places. And if I were to contrast what Apache Iceberg does with a normal database, and this is indeed one part of the story, data could be stored in different places, and keeping track of all of that is something that a Apache Iceberg catalog can do for you. However, instead of just keeping track of where a file is, you can also maybe think ahead and think of some other useful features you might want to add to a catalog. One thing you could do is you could maybe store some metadata for all these different files that are stored on all these different backends. You might want to keep track of how many rows there are, what the schema is. So that's something you want to keep track of. Another thing you might want to do is think about partitions. You might be clever in the way that you store files, for example. Maybe you want to group stuff by date. And then if a user comes in and wants to select a subset of dates, then we don't have to go through all the different files out there. We can be a lot more efficient with that query. But we also want to think about evolution. It's one thing to declare a partition on your data, but it's something else to also maybe evolve it over time. And there's a similar thing with schemas, because maybe you want to add a column, maybe you want to remove one. And the more you start thinking about these actual things you want to do with your data, then you need more than just a catalog that keeps track of where things are. And all of this, this is a better way to think about Apache Iceberg. Yes, it can be thought of as a catalog, but it does a lot of other things on top of that that you also want when you're doing data for real. Now, one thing to point out is that there is, of course, a distinction between the service that actually stores your data and the service that can handle the metadata and does all the required tracking on top of it. And if you were running this locally on your own machine, one way to do this is to maybe configure SQLite as that database that does all the tracking. And then Apache Iceberg can use that to do all sorts of clever things with metadata and such. But the whole point of the service that Cloudflare now has is that that part is actually managed. So you wouldn't run your own Apache Iceberg on top of a database that in turn keeps track of where all the files are. No, that is something that is managed. And from there on, you can use R2 to your heart's content to actually store all the files for you. But you wouldn't communicate with R2 directly. Instead, you would do that via the Apache Iceberg service, which in turn is fully managed by Cloudflare. Now, as luck would have it, Apache Iceberg is directly supported inside of Marimo, which also means that this service is directly supported in Marimo which means that we can give it a spin quite easily. All right, so I'm in a Marimo notebook now and I'm about to give you a demo, but if you wanna follow along, you are gonna to wanna to run this command from the command line first. Wrangler can be seen as the command line interface that connects to Cloudflare and does everything for you. But the main thing that's important is that you wanna create a bucket. So you have to give it a bucket name. And when you run that command, you're gonna see some output in your terminal that you want to just remember for a moment because you're gonna need it later. Once you've run this command, you also gotta to go to the Cloudflare interface to add a security key that you can refer to locally. And once you've done all of that, then you can start setting things up in Python. To set everything up, I am using the Pi Iceberg library. And in particular, I'm grabbing the REST catalog. And that REST catalog can be initialized if you have the security token. That's the thing you set up in Cloudflare yourself. But then you also need a catalog URI as well as a warehouse identifier. And 
I've stored those as environment variables over here, but those two things are grabbed from the terminal, as I mentioned earlier. This is everything you need to set up the catalog though, and now you can start creating tables. To create a table, you are going to need to create a namespace. So I'm creating a default namespace over here with the create namespace if not exists function. And then after that, I need to grab some data that I can put in. In this case, I've got this data set locally on disk that's all about train rides and services and whether or not they were delayed. It's a gzipped CSV file that I'm just reading in with polars. I'm changing this one column over here such that this date is actually a date. And then I'm converting that to arrow. And that's important because Apache Iceberg really likes to communicate with these arrow tables and you cannot pass them polars data frames just yet. However, I do have a data frame over here and the data frame also has a schema. I can confirm in this case, by the way, that the date is indeed a date and there are integers, there's large strings in here, there's booleans, there's all sorts of different columns, but there is this schema that's available to me. One quick thing, by the way, is that these arrow tables, they also are like data frames in a sense that we will also generate this interactive widget for you. So as far as the UI is concerned, it really is like dealing with a Polar's data frame, but it is good to be aware that it is a different kind of object under the hood. Let's now pass it to Iceberg. So I'm creating this one table with the name train because this is about trains. And I'm asking the catalog, look, does that table exist in the default namespace? If not, then we're gonna create a table. I need to pass it this tuple that has the namespace and the name of the table. And I need to pass it a schema. This gives me a reference to a table, but there's no data in that table just yet. This is really just the shape of the table that will go in. I need a separate command to actually add data in. And for that, you can use this append method that is attached to the table. Note, by the way, that from a distance, you can already kind of smell how you might be able to evolve a data set. When you've got a batch of new data, you can append it. But the fact that we are dealing with creating a table and then adding data in it, that hopefully does make it feel substantially different from just toying around with a data frame locally. This is a different abstraction under the hood. So we've got our data into the catalog and now comes the one demo that I really wanted to get at. Because let's say now you wanna maybe do something with this data. Then there are actually two ways to get this data out. One way is to use Polars directly. And the other way is to actually leverage Iceberg instead. And there's a difference as far as performance goes. So let's consider this method first. I have my catalog and then I'm telling it that I wanna load a table from the default namespace. I wanna have my train data set. And then I'm gonna cast it to Polars immediately. After which I am doing a filter. I'm saying, look, there's this service date. And I really want that to be this one specific date. And after that, I collect all the rows because when I cast it to polars over here, then I get a lazy data frame by calling collect. Then I actually run the query and I get a data frame that's actually in memory. Now, when I hover over a cell over here on the right-hand side, you can see how long this took. And this one command took about 12 seconds, a little bit less. Now let's contrast that by leveraging iceberg a bit more, which I'm doing in the cell below. I'm doing the same thing, but before casting it to polars, I'm using this scan method over here. And this is different than what I did before. Before, I was basically telling Iceberg to just stream all the data onto my machine, and then Polars could do the filtering. What I'm saying here is that, hey, Iceberg, I have a table over here. I want you to scan that table, but I also want you to use your metadata that you've got to really only get me these rows that I'm interested in. And I want to have rows where this column is equal to this value. And when I run it this way, we can see that it's a whole bunch faster. This barely took two seconds. That is a pretty big difference. And this is also why Apache Iceberg has been gaining in popularity. By being both clever about the way that you store your data and by also being clever in where you store your data, you can come up with very pragmatic architectures for your data pipelines. And in the case of Cloudflare, you don't have to run this catalog yourself. You really only have to configure a bucket and then Cloudflare takes it up from there. And while doing so, you are going to benefit from the very low egress fees, which could be a very good reason to give this service a spin. Now, before wrapping up, there's one big feature worth mentioning, and that is the fact that this catalog is, of course, something that Marimo understands and supports. So if you were to go to the data sources panel over here, then you're going to see that data frame that we declared, but you can also see that we are connected to Apache Iceberg. And when we explore the default namespace, you can see a couple of tables that I added, but the main one that we added in this video is also right here. And from here, I can also explore the schema, which is very nice. But the main thing that's really significant here is that this is now a resource that I can refer to from the AI panel over here. I could write at and then auto completion appears and I could refer to that table that is in R2 and I could maybe write a query for it. So the query that I wrote was calculate the number of trains per city from the train table, but only for uh, this one particular date, uh, use predicate pushdown and then do the rest in polars. And when I then look at the response, I do think that we are indeed generating the right code. 
we are using the right date over here. The row filter is being applied on the catalog, and then this looks like valid polars. If you found this interesting and want to give this a spin yourself, check the show notes because there will be a link to the notebook that I used. But if you're keen to learn more, you can also check out the Cloudflare docs. And in particular, if you go to the R2 docs, there is this section down below over here about the R2 data catalog, and this will also have a getting started guide. This guide also uses Marimo, by the way, but you can read more about some of the details by checking out the docs over here. Thanks for listening.